Hi, I'm Eric Price, product specialist at Alice Copco. Today, we are going to go over the configurations tab on the Power Focus platform. Let's head into the software. Today, I am using a Power Focus 8, although a lot of this applies to other products within the platform, such as an integrated controller on an IXB tool or tools control. Some of these sections in the configurations tab may be different based on the controller's capabilities that you have, so please keep that in mind. Now we are in the controller's web GUI, we will be talking about this tab right here, the configurations tab. A couple of general notes to point out, this is just where we create our configurations. We are not assigning anything. After we create the configurations, we have to then assign it within the virtual station. Also, on each tab at the top right, you will see the plus button to create a new configuration. I always recommend naming each configuration to help with organization and then selecting edit will bring you into the actual settings. Starting at the top, we have tool configuration. It is very important to choose the correct tool type by selecting filter by tool type because there are specific settings available for different tool types. For example, if you select an IXB tool to configure, but you are actually using a cable tool, some of the settings for an IXB will not be relevant to that cable tool. We are going to create a configuration for a cable tool and we will name it cable tool, filter tool type to cable tool, and then select edit. Tool configuration is where we can edit our functions that we want on the tool itself, such as function buttons, LEDs, direction switches, and buzzers. Also in the general settings section, you can turn the traces on and off. Start condition to determine how the tool will start. For example, if you had a remote start or a safety trigger, something like that. You can also configure your accessories that are mounted on the tool, like a scanner or an EHMI here. Lastly, if you are using an open-ended tool, you can configure those settings here as well. Next, if you have a physical controller with the built-in I.O., you will find the configurations here. By selecting the three dots, you can configure what each I.O. signal sent and received will mean. We also have the I.O. expander, which is the same configuration as the internal I.O., although the difference here is that the I.O. expander is an added accessory, but you will still select your desired inputs and outputs the same way and have the same options for signals to choose from. Configurating the operator panel is similar to the I.O. sections above. When in edit, you will select the three dots to the corresponding position. The difference here is the components that you have to choose from, such as a specific lamp to light for operator feedback, key switches, buzzers, things like that. In the stack light configuration, you can add or remove lamps to change the height or color of the lights that you have. The number up top will correspond to the lights themselves, such as what I have programmed here. Red lamp for NOK, green lamp for OK, yellow lamp while the batch is running, and so on. The letters down below will correspond to the components on the stack light's body. Next, we have the socket selector. A socket selector is a socket tray with LEDs that can be used to guide the user through a process such as a batch sequence. When a socket is lifted, the corresponding tightening program is selected. You'll see that we have a toggle for control to auto or external. For most applications, auto will be used. It is the default option. External would be used if the socket selection was being controlled by an external system or PLC. When we click into edit, all we really have to do here is define the number of slots that the process requires. You can add or remove positions as well as enable or disable slots. To assign the tightening program that is associated with each socket, that would be done in the source menu. Next is the indicator box, which is exactly as it sounds. It is a series of lights that you can configure to turn on or off when an event occurs. You can add or remove configurations based on the number of lights that you are utilizing. In the scanner tab, the only option you have is to toggle pass-through mode on or off. Pass-through mode allows strings to be forwarded through by the controller to an external system. Finally, we have the general virtual station tab. This is where the report filtering and tightening settings are. Result filter for reporting allows you to select which results we want to have in our reports. For example, if we didn't want to have loosenings to be reported, we can simply toggle it to off. In tightening settings, we have the ability to lock or unlock the tool based on an NOK or OK tightening. 
We also have the ability to disable tightenings or disable loosenings. Lastly, the result presentation settings only apply if you are using a prevailing torque strategy. It allows you to show the final torque with or without a compensated value if it applies. This has been an overview of the configurations tab on the PowerFocus platform. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please contact your local Atlas Kafka representative. Thanks for watching.